Previously on A Art Adventure. Whoa, it's a rainbow rose, man. What does it even mean? And now, the exciting conclusion. Will it be double rainbow rose all the way? Let's go on an art adventure and find out. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christopher. If you're here for the first time, welcome. You missed part one to this where I unboxed Palette 4 Pack's premiere pack for September and found some Koinor Tri-Blend pencils among other things and drew this rainbow rose that you can see here. Today I'm completing the rest of that rose and moving on to the rose on the left. First of all, I'm starting off in real time with these Inkline pens or pigment marker pens from Art Alternatives. We received 0 0.1, 0.3 and 0.5 and I'm just showing you how slow I go with the first lines to make sure that they're smooth and clear and crisp and I also tend to work from right to left because I'm left-handed. That way I prevent smudging or try to prevent smudging. It's a continual trick and curse for left-handers to try to have to deal with smudging and avoid it. But if you are right-handed, I also recommend working left to right. And there were also a couple of blender pencils or a extra blender pencil and the paper that I'm working on, which is the Strathmore 400 series Bristol Vellum Service Surface. So a really cool pack. They are marketed as professional grade pencils, but from my experience using them and the difficulty of putting down layers over like three layers, I would say that they're actually more like a student grade pencil. Um, but that was still quite good. And of course, you can see three different colors on the barrels or the outside casing of the pencil. What is that called? I got a mind blank. But anyway, there's three different colors because the pencil leads are three different colors and they're braided in together to form one pencil core of multiple colors. And when you uh, twist the barrel or the pencil a little bit, you will change the, the tone slightly or greatly. It depends on the pencil. Some of them are very, very similar. A few of them were quite different. I actually got curious and went to the Koinor website and found that they've actually removed the ones that are super similar from this set and have put in a pink and a darker purple and also a gray black set which is pretty much exactly what I recommended would improve this set. I'm still a little disappointed that we didn't in the premiere pack receive the 24 pack of these pencils. I think that that would have been much better. And I think that it's reasonable, even though the retail price in some cases was really high. I found pretty much everywhere that I looked online that the 12 set was selling for like 10 to $15 US. But anyway, um, moving on to the leaves, I found that I was a bit worried actually with the leaves that I wouldn't be able to get enough variation because I've got only t three greens. Two of them are very similar to each other, but I used also the yellow pencil to give some highlights and the blue to give some shading. And actually I was pretty happy with the end result for them. And now I'm moving on to the, the other rows and you can see that I've pulled out a completely different pencil set. These are the Royals Royce of pencils, the Caran d'Ache Luminance set. Very expensive, only buy them if you're really serious about color pencil work. Otherwise there's really no need to have them. And one of the main reasons you would have want to get them is that they are also light fast. But, um, I've been wanting them for years and years and years and so eventually I bit the bullet. I started off buying just 10 of them after a couple of years of thinking about it and then went for the full set. You can also see that I'm not just using greens now that I have all these different colors. There's 70 or so in the Caran d'Ache Luminance set and so I'm using yellows, greens, blues and even reds to darken and dull down the green in parts. And I also, for the first time, try out this color pencil blender powder. I didn't find that it worked that well for me on this paper. And I ended up looking online on YouTube and finding out that many people use it on sanded paper and that they're able to really blend very smoothly on that. So I'll have to try it on that next. But for me, it barely blended at all on this paper. You also have to use a really light touch and I think that there are a couple of other tricks to it as well. So then I switched to using my blending solution. If you missed part one, I showed you how that is used. There's all kinds. I'm using the Holbein melts here, but in the US, many people use Gamsol or Mona Lisa 
odorless mineral spirits and that will dissolve the binder and allow the pigment to smooth into the valleys of the paper and give a more painterly sort of look rather than a patchy or a, a look that has white dots and that's cool if you want that for pencil work but I was trying to go for a smooth kind of waxy ro glistening rose sort of approach waxy leaves and kind of soft petals or glistening petals and I also try my best to put in some veins in a quick way um, or a semi quick way I guess I spent one day on the drawing and the rose on the right and one full day on the rose on the left and you can see here I'm going to shift to real time for the petals of the rose at first just for a little bit so that you can get a sense of how long I take to work on these color pencil pieces. I'm working in small circular motions which is usually recommended for color pencil work. I'm being a bit looser than I would be if I was doing something quite serious and um, really taking care with but for this I'm just trying to try out the the pencils and try out the paper and get a feel for what is possible with them because I've never used this paper before for color pencil work and I've never used the full Caran d'Ache luminance set and actually I very rarely do full color pencil pieces. I do enjoy color pencils but I usually mix it with watercolors and other mediums so I'll put down a base layer of color pencil for example and then start putting color pencil on top of that. So it's pretty rare for me to actually just do the whole thing in color pencil. Oh, well, there's the pigment line work, but really, effectively, the whole thing is color pencil. And you can see that I'm also using multiple colors. That's another thing that many color pencil artists do. They will mix in multiple colors into each other to get some of them the best out of color pencils and what they can achieve. They're semi-transparent. They blend into each other and layer on top of each other. And you can get some really amazing and luminous effects from doing that. So I've used already I think like five color pencils just on this first layer. It's a couple of blues, a green, a yellow and I'll also use a turquoise and then I'll start putting in the next layer. On the second layer I start going a little bit firmer but only just very very slightly firmer and it's not really usually until I've used solvent at least once or twice that I start to press harder. For these petals eventually I start actually um, pushing a little bit harder on the third layer and blending just with pencils themselves. So I've showed you using the pe color pencil powder blender that's a new product or fairly new product that some artists use to blend. I've used uh, I showed you solvent which is what um, many color pencil artists use to, to blend and get a more painterly and smooth look. But you can also use blender pencils. These I've just got a wax or oil core without any pigment in them and then you just place it on top of the color pencil that you've already laid down and you press and push the colorless pencil blender on top of that and it should push pigment down into the valleys of the paper. Generally you're going to be burnishing the paper as you do that which means to smooth out the paper and to get a more kind of glistening or uh, waxy sort of look on the top. Not all pencils are wax, some are oil but generally you end up if you press down or burnish with a sort of waxy glistening glossy sort of look no matter whether or not the pencil is wax based or oil based. And there's one other technique that you can use which is using a lighter color pencil like a white or an ivory or a light cream to smooth out the pencil. This is also going to lighten the tone of the pigment slightly as well but that can also be on purpose. You can also of course do it with a darker pencil but then you're just going to be burnishing in the dark and covering the pencil layers that you've already done. So most color pencil artists are going to use a light color pencil. And you can see around here I start to actually work a little bit faster. Maybe I got a little bit sick of the whole process or I uh, got a little bit impatient I should say with the whole process and wanted to speed things up. But I also just found that the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils on this paper worked okay with putting down three to four 
very light layers and then starting to press harder and burnishing all of the colors into each other. And I wanted a glossy sort of petal, so it was working out quite fine. There were some exceptions. Some of the color pencils worked better than others at that. The yellows and the reds and the greens to some extent worked well with that sort of technique, but the blues and purples were a bit trickier to, to pull off, or at least I found particularly some of the lighter purples. I pretty much had to layer more times and also use lighter color pencils and a colorless blender pencil to blend it all in together and to get a smoother look. Maybe that's partly the paper, maybe that's partly my inexperience, maybe it's a combination of factors, but that's how I found it to be. If you are curious about color pencil work and how to improve in it, I can recommend two channels on YouTube where there's lots of color pencil stuff going on, uh, Luckry Fine Art and also Unmask Art. I'll put the, the titles of those channels up if I remember and I'd recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Most people are often aware of them already, but there's more and more um, smaller channels that are coming up that also do amazing color pencil work. And I do it from time to time. I just wouldn't say that it's my preferred medium or something that I'm very experienced with. I feel like I'm quite a beginner at color pencil work, but I really enjoy it when I have the time for it because it's slow. Like I said, it took two days for me just to do this piece of these two roses without even really a background. Actually, there isn't a background. So uh, they are quite slow medium. And so you have to be able to be willing to invest a lot of time if you want a smooth painterly look. If you want a rough pencil sketchy sort of look, of course you can go for that. And I think that can be really beautiful with color pencils as well. I just don't tend to do it that much unless I'm just doing a rough sketch. Speaking of that, I think for the Koenor Tri-Blend pencils, that's probably what I'm gonna be using them from now on. I've tried them since this doing this rose in my sketchbook, just doing a couple of rough sketches. And I quite liked the variation and interest that you get from having multiple colors on your sketch lines. You can't really erase it well, but you know, for sketchbook work and just having messy lines, I'm okay with that. I just don't really feel that they're up to the level of my other pencil sets that I'm lucky enough to have. I do have the full Caran d'Ache Luminance set now. And I also a couple of years ago bought the uh, full Faber-Castell Polychromos set. And I also have actually the full Van Gogh set, but you can only buy that if you're in Japan. I do have some small amounts of other color pencils, like a handful of Holbein pencils. They're amazing as well, particularly their soft white, I think is incredible, but just their pale and pastel tones in general are just so beautiful. And generally you'll find that different color pencil sets are better at doing different things, maybe on different papers and so on. But I would personally recommend if you're confused and trying to figure out what set to buy, that the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromo set is a, a fantastic all-rounder, possibly the best all-rounder. And if you can afford the Caran d'Ache Luminance set and the Polychromo set, that's the best of both worlds because the Caran d'Ache Luminance set will allow you to, in many cases, put down color pencil in pigment in large amounts quickly. And then the Polychromo set you can use for the fine details because it's a firmer core with the Polychromos and you can get the finishing touches put in and put in those very fine details. You can put in, of course, fine details with the luminance set. It's just a little bit harder, I think. I think you have to maybe sharpen the pencils a little bit more often and also take a little bit more care. They're just a slightly softer core, um, but they, they work great. And so either one of those sets I could totally recommend as being fantastic. And Obviously, if you're still confused, you should check out some other channels and see what other people say and recommend because I think a lot of it comes down to personal preference and also the paper that you use and also the technique and how you intend to use the, the pencils. If you're just using um, pencils for coloring in books, you really don't need any of those really high-end sets at all. I think you can get many great sets. Even the Crayola pencils work great for coloring in books. The main reason the professional level 
color pencil sets are so expensive is simply because they are light fast pigments and that they have a slightly higher pigment load than you'll find in some other sets or sometimes a very higher pigment load than you'll find in other sets. So I hope that that's been useful to you. I hope that you've enjoyed this art adventure today. I'm actually going to be doing a part three, sort of, a related part three where I'll be drawing some roses and showing people how I draw roses. Again, I'm pretty much, I would say, a beginner when it comes to that sort of topic, but maybe that's useful for you if you're trying to get better at drawing roses. I'll be able to show you some tips and techniques. I was planning to put it into this video, but it went a little bit long, so you have to wait for that. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe already. It really helps out my channel a lot. And let me know down in the comments below what your favorite color pencils are, if you have enjoyed watching this rose adventure or not. And if you use color pencils, let me know your favorite tip or trick to do with using color pencils well. I think the, the time where I found out from Lacry Fine Art to use an opposite color on the, op on the color wheel really helped a lot, such as adding some deep red to green to tone it down, which seems so obvious, but I just never thought about doing it. And I think it really helped to create, help me to improve creating depth and interest and contrast in some of my pieces, like you can see with the dark parts of the leaves there. Anyway, as always, create more, consume less, and I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Take care guys. Bye. Oh,